Out. Hurricane Irma threatens the Caribbean, Puerto Rico, and now the U.S. The powerful storm, said to be one of the strongest storms in history, is now a Category 5. Packing sustained winds of 185 miles per hour, people are bracing for the worst. In St. Martin in the Caribbean, where Irma came through overnight, disastrous conditions, very high water and a lot of flooding. Debris is scattered around much of the towns. Cars in some places can barely be seen. And in Puerto Rico, Irma is pounding neighborhoods with very strong winds. You can see toppled trees and rain coming down right there. WJZ is first 20 weather coverage. Kenneth Craig updates the damage already caused by the storm and how Florida is bracing for what's to come. But first, meteorologist Tim Williams and Meg McNamara are tracking Hurricane Irma and updating the storm strength. Let's start with Tim. This is a monster storm. It is moving, of course, across the uh, into the Caribbean, and it is moving very uh, rapidly, very steadily. And let's take you to our satellite and give you an idea of what's going on. This is an infrared satellite that just kind of gives you an idea, a very clean idea of what this storm looks like. You see a very concentric eye, a very distinguished and very discernible eye right there in the middle, moving just to the north of Puerto Rico. The system is moving out of the British Virgin Islands and moving toward the U.S. Uh, Virgin Isles, but it is moving at around 16 miles per hour. Hour. We'll bring up the cone of possibility there and show you that it is still, as of the last update, a Category 5 hurricane with 185 mile per hour sustained winds with gusts up to 225 miles per hour. By all accounts, considered a potentially catastrophic storm, and it is moving again very steadily to the west northwest, but is expected to make a bit of a turn. And for more on where it could be going over the next several days, we're sending it over to Meg McNamara with more. Meg? Well, Tim, I want to show you the computer model. So the latest run of these models, continuing with this west-northwesterly path before making that sharp turn to the north. Now, today we did see a little change in this path. You'll notice the track now shifted over here to the east. We see most of these computer models really forming here right along the eastern edge of Florida. And then we see them moving up into Georgia, the Carolinas. And yes, so here is Maryland. There is the potential that next week we could see an impact from Hurricane Irma. We could see flooding rains. We could see storm surge tornadoes. That's something we'll be tracking, although at this point there still is that uncertainty. But yes, this update with the track shifting to the east. Of course, all of Florida, though, bracing for that impact. We'll have more on what's going on in the tropics and, of course, your local forecast coming up in just a sec. Back to you. Meg, thank you. First morning weather coverage continues now with Kenneth Craig reporting for WJZ on the tiny islands Irma has already smashed through and how much of Florida is bracing for impact. Irma is closing in on Puerto Rico, lashing the U.S. territory with strong winds and drenching rain. Forecasters expect it to pass just north of the island tonight. The Category 5 storm pummeled several Caribbean islands with 185 mile an hour winds overnight. Floodwater swamped boats and left cars underwater on St. Martin. Florida's governor is warning people to prepare for a worst case scenario when it hits the U.S. mainland on Sunday. I cannot stress this enough. Do not ignore evacuation orders. Tampa's mayor was more blunt. This ain't Indiana. Uh, this is serious stuff, and you will die. People are leaving the Florida Keys on the only road in and out of the island chain ahead of tonight's mandatory evacuation. Here on Miami Beach, officials started handing out sandbags yesterday. Today, this line of cars to get them is more than four hours long. What concerns you the most? Flooding. Flooding. Adriana Dreyfus isn't taking any chances. Her parents lost everything during Hurricane Andrew. Today, she picked up 10 sandbags. She plans to secure her family home and then hit the road. We have reservations in Orlando, but it's heading that way too. My sister lives in Orlando as well. Supermarkets, gas is a problem there as well. She's one of many people in South Florida desperately hoping that what happened with Harvey in Houston doesn't repeat itself here. Kenneth Craig, WJZ Eyewitness News. And WJZ's first warning weather team will continue to track Irma. We will bring you the latest updates on the powerful storm's path and impact.